projection at an angle. Okay, so we're going to project now at an angle. So we're going to launch the projectile at angle theta, uh, at angle theta with speed v. So let's go this way. So we see if I can draw a straight line. So we launch the projectile at a certain angle theta at speed v, and it's going to go like that. So let's do something like let's divide a motion into two halves. Let's say this is the first half and that's the second half. And let's say that this is um, the maximum height h max. So we we'll say h max is maximum height. And r again is equal to range. And this r is just this distance here. That's the range. So since projectile motion in, two in the two dimensional plane. We've looked at projectile motion in two-dimensional plane already, so we know that we can separate the motion into the individual components x and y. So we can treat the, the vertical motion independently from the horizontal motion. So we can treat the vertical and horizontal motions, motions independently, and we shall say that we shall consider the two halves. Let's look first at the vertical motion, so we can draw the vector for the velocity again and we have the angle theta so this is V so we can have a vertical component here let's call it V subscript Y and then we have a horizontal component let's call it V subscript X so V subscript Y is equal to V sine theta V subscript X is equal to V cosine theta. So vertical motion first. So we can say for vertical motion, we can use the kinematic equations that we had. So we can say that h max is equal to v initial y. So we shall use, let's, let's first write it generically. So we can say that for vertical motion, y final equals y initial plus v initial y delta t plus half a y delta t squared. And so we'll say that let's consider how long it takes to reach the maximum height. Let's call that time delta t1. So we can say that using v final y equals v initial y plus a y delta t, we can rewrite it as v final y equals uh, v initial y plus uh, g delta t1 and we shall say that since so we can say at maximum height v final y will be equal to zero we know that v initial y is equal to v sine theta so we can say zero equals v sine theta plus g delta t1 therefore Delta T1 is equal to negative V sine theta over G. So this is the time it will take to reach the maximum height H max. Now let's look at the time it takes to come back down. Okay, sorry. Yeah. yeah so we can next find the time it takes to come back down. Let's call that time delta T2 because it will be happening on the second half of the motion. So remember we divided the motion into two halves. The first half is one, the second half is two. So it takes delta T1 to go to the maximum height and delta T2 to come back down. Okay, so we're gonna divide, we divided it that way. So we can use the same formula and this time we shall call it delta T2. So now since the object is at the highest point already, it's coming back down. So we can say that V initial Y is equal to zero. Okay, in going back down and we shall see that v final y is just equal to g uh, delta t2 and since the motion is symmetric we can take advantage of that so we can assume that the projectile lands at the same height from which it was launched so that by symmetry so we are assuming that it lands at the same height from which it was launched so by symmetry v final y is just equal to negative v sine theta because it will be pointing downwards when it gets down there so it's going to be in a negative direction okay so we can say then negative v 
sine theta equals g delta t2, therefore uh, delta t2 is equal to negative v sine theta over g. The whole point of this is that since the motion is symmetric, it takes the same time to go up as it takes to come back down. So we can now find the total time of flight, delta t, by just summing t1 plus delta t2. So we're adding delta t1 and delta t2 to find the total time of flight. So delta t is equal to minus v sine theta over g plus minus v sine theta over g and this is negative 2v sine theta over g. So the time of flight delta t would be negative 2v sine theta over g. So now that we know time of flight, let's calculate the horizontal range. So we can calculate the range r. The range r is given by v uh, vx, so let's say v final x delta t. We again assume that we assume no air resistance. So we can say that v final x is equal to v initial x, and we can say that's equal to a certain v. Right? And so the horizontal range is just equal to v cosine theta delta t. Uh, let me take out this v here. So I'm going to remove this v so we don't get confused. I'll just say v final x is equal to v initial x. So I'll say that r is equal to v cosine theta delta t. And then plug in the delta t that we found. So we shall have v cosine theta multiplied by negative 2v sine theta over g. Let's simplify this by using a trigonometric identity. So what we have is r equals um, v minus 2 minus 2 v squared sine theta cosine theta over g and we can say this is equal to minus v squared sine 2 theta over g okay so the trigonometric identity is that v 2 sine theta cosine theta is equal to sine 2 theta Okay, so I've just compressed it by using that identity. And notice that the negative is there because it cancels out with a negative 9.8 when you put that in there. Okay, so we'll say that. So the negatives will cancel. So if you look in some books, they have it as a positive v squared sine 2 theta over g. That's because they've already defined v. They've already said negative 9.8. Or they've taken out the negative because they're already putting negative g in there. So if you put in your g, which is negative 9.8, the negatives cancel out, and you just have v squared sine 2 theta over g. So that will be your range. Okay. We are assuming that the base is at 0, and going forward is positive. So we can analyze this and look at the maximum r. When is r maximum? So what is the maximum range? Okay. So given our range to be negative uh, v squared, Given our range to be negative v squared sine 2 theta over g, we shall have r max when sine 2 theta is equal to 1. Therefore, theta should be equal to 45 degrees. This gives r max equals v squared or negative v squared over g. So what we are saying is that if you launch the projectile at about what, 45 degrees, that will give you the maximum range. So the angle theta should be 40, and that will give that will be that will lead to v squared over r g. That's your maximum range. We will do a few examples next. Let's do some simple examples. Okay. So try that. What is the time to reach the maximum height? Okay, 2.55 seconds. So what we had for that was delta t1 equals minus v sine theta over g. So what this tells you is that anytime you launch a projectile at any angle, what you need to do is just to take the sine of the angle and multiply by v. So for example, in this case, it was sine 30. So if you launch at 50 degrees, sine 30 is half. So it's just going to be 25 over 10, which is 2.5. Okay, if you if you launch at a hundred meters per second, 
then you're going to add 30 degrees, then it's going to be 50 over 10, which is 5. So it's very simple, very straightforward. Okay. And if you want to find the total time of flight for symmetric motion, you just multiply that by 2. All right. You multiply delta T1 by 2, and that gives you the total time of flight. So the next question is, what is the range? Any answer for the range? 220. 2 what? 220.7. OK, so 220.7 meters. I'm sure everybody is getting that. Are you all getting 220.7? OK. And then number three, what is that? You got 500 and what? 5 root 3. Oh, 5 root 3. I don't know what 5 root 3 is. But why 5 root 3? And that looks like it's going to be a lot less than what we want. 5 root 3 is, root 3 is 1.7 something, isn't it? So 5 root 3 is just going to be, uh, what is that? 5 root 3 is about 8, 8 and a half, 8.5. That's, so what is, how do you get 5 root 3? Anyway, just use the formula that we gave for range. V, R equals minus V squared sine 2 theta over G. And make sure that your calculator is set for uh, the right mode. Um, number three, what do you have at an angle of 15 degrees? At uh, 30 degrees, we had 220. At 45 degrees, what do you have? At 60 degrees? 60% is 30. No, it, the negative goes away. Uh, well, I got 20 the same, the same as 30 degrees. And then at 75 degrees, same as 8. Yeah. So I gave you this to make a point that you can see that the projectile motion, in this case, we are presuming that we are landing at the same height. So the motion is very symmetric. So if you launch the projectile at 15 degrees, it's the same as launching at 75. Okay. So if you like, we can plot a graph of the horizontal range versus launch angle. So you will see that, uh, let's say this is 15 degrees. So if you launch at 15 degrees, it goes here. If you launch at 75 degrees, it goes like that and lands at the same place. It, what is it? If you launch at 30 degrees, uh, it goes this way, 30 degrees. And then if you launch at 60 degrees, goes like that. Uh, 60 degrees is going to be a little bit lower than 75, so it goes and goes that way, right? And then if you launch at 45 degrees, it goes that way. See that? So 45 degrees gives you the, what is that? Yes, that's the R max, okay? okay so 45 degrees is your R max, and so you can see that the one, the one launched at 75 degrees will be the highest and then it will, it will land at the same place as the 15 degree one, 30 degrees and 220 degrees. Uh, 30 degrees is going to be lower than 60 degrees, but it land at the same point. 45 degrees lands the farthest away, but the height will be lower. So everybody following that? All right, so let's stop here.